Well, hello again, traders, and welcome out to your currency recap. This is Socket here, and let's begin the market coverage. We'll be talking about today's uh, market recap, looking at what happened in the markets, looking at a broad market analysis, and taking a look at our currency baskets and doing some technical analysis and looking at some trade setups. So let's get into today's market analysis. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest U.S.-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four-minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full-length recruiting video, and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? So looking at the performance today, we are seeing a continuation of that market movement that we saw on Friday. The equity market continues to be on the bullish side, and we did notice that the yields did pull back along with the dollar. So overall, we have talked about how the dollar and the yields have really uh, diverged from each other lately. But today, it was a pretty spot on sort of price action in both of those markets. So taking a look at the percentage return today, you can see the S&P was only up 0.22%. So it's a very mild bullish day, uh, star BT 0.10%. Crypto overall had a nice performance, uh, 1.82, and looking at the gold, 0.01. Um, gold is almost flat. Again, that's broadly because of the dollar and the yields. Uh, oil did pull back slightly, so you can see it wasn't a really a big firework day today. We are expecting more of that later on this week as we get some key economic data. Remember, that's where really we're getting more movement along, along the lines when we get these key economic data. Looking at the uh, the overall markets, S and P 500, you can see that we are still in a bullish trend. I mean, we can we can say that this is a bit of a short term top, where we tested twice and did pull back. But as long as we stay above this 20 day moving average, we are okay. The only time the technicals will break down if we give up this 20 day moving average. So I think this is a time to be staying moderately, moderately bullish on that. Um, we are in this summer quieter month, so. Um, you know, don't really expect much. We can easily spend time consolidate in this little wider range. Uh, and that's uh, that's uh, that's something that's common to see in sort of a, a summer uh, sideways market. Now, looking at the world stock index, seeing a little bit more weakness. But overall, uh, this thing has uh, gone below the 20 day moving average and still above the 50. So the world market looks a little bit more weaker compared to the U.S., and finally, the crypto market, I mean, this more looks like a bull pullback to me. I mean, this thing has almost come down to the 20-day moving average. And today was the interesting thing that we saw a market rally across major cryptocurrencies. So that's a good sign for the last three, four weeks. Again, a lot of action has been in Litecoin. A lot of action has been in uh, Bitcoin Cash, but not so much in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So today was a good day where we saw some gains across the board. And as we take a look at the daily performance today, we can see that Bitcoin was up 2.44%, Bitcoin Cash up 66 even Ethereum up 1.88%, and in Litecoin 259 So overall, a good day in the crypto markets. It seems like at this point, it's worth taking you shot more on the upside um, as we are bouncing off that 20-day moving average. Now, looking at the currency market, again, a lot of muted price action. One of the things that we do want to notice is that there is movements, but in very much a handful of currencies. So if you take a look at the overall market action today, I mean, pound, it did move down early in the morning and then recover. So there was a bit of a back and forth today. But if you take a look at the percentage change, you don't, you don't see much happen in the markets. CAD, uh, you know, only uh, down 0 0.15, but... You just gave back early on the gains from early on the day. Same thing with the dollar. So dollar is looking a lot weaker here. We'll take a look at the dollar charts. But outside of that, where it was a shining spot, the yen. And I know we this is a, an odd currency to see on the stronger side because, you know, we have spent the last, you know, at least a couple of months on the weak yen. So here we are seeing a little bit more positive uh, price action in the yen. And that's just coming off in the weaker dollar as well. 
looking at Swiss franc, which again continued to outperform the euro here. We talk about this divergence and it seems like that divergence is still there. We'll take a look at the charts just to kind of take a look at a broader picture. But overall, Swiss franc is right at the resistance. Looks like it wants to break out. But outside of that, uh, the Aussie was the weakest overnight. If you look at the session this morning, Aussie actually was down a lot more. And then during the day, it really paired off some of the losses here because of the currencies to turn around. So this is a, a summer market environment where we are just seeing a lot of back and forth and certain currencies staying with this overall trend. But we're just not seeing a whole lot of twists and turns. Overall, markets are moving very orderly. And this is where the volatility is down across. So taking a look at the market outlook, we're still sticking at a plus three. I mean, I, I would say I'll, go, I'll bring it down to maybe a plus two just because we are not making a new high yet. We are bouncing off the level. And this is, again, where we can see a couple of updates and a couple of down days. So this is the time, like I said, to be a little bit more careful. Now, looking at the schedule, uh, this is where my focus is more on trading the news of announcements. Again, this is how I have been uh, placing my trades is making sure I'm trading around where is going to be a little bit more energy in the markets because you can see that there's times when we see a pickup in energy and then we see things sort of die down. So it's important to, if you, especially if you're looking for shorter term trades, get in, get out and not really worry about it a little longer term, then you need to be looking at trades when there is a news event. So starting tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow, uh, again, I'm, this is the one I'm really looking forward to is the Kiwi rate statement. Again, they're looking to hold. So I'm kind of uh, looking at the RBA and how did the price action came along at that time and see if we can or see the similar price action at this point as well. Of course, those statements are key because if they do, if they do turn bullish or hawkish, then there is a bit more room for Kiwi to run. But if they stay, if they stay uh, on this little uh, hold and a uh, little bit of dovish side, then we'll probably see that spill into the price action. But again, expecting some movement here. We'll be actually meeting live on this. So uh, Corey will be taking you through um, this RBNZ rate statement. So um, we'll be uh, hoping to get some pips off of that news event. But as you can see, on on Wednesday, we had the CPI. We have the Bank of Canada rate statement on Wednesday. So there's definitely a lot happening. Uh, there was not a whole lot today. So what we saw today was a bit of a continuation from what we saw on Friday, which is very common. As we go from a Friday to a Monday, we just see a bit of a spillover for whatever happened on a Friday. But the real uh, sort of price action will start to begin starting tomorrow. Now, let Are you a better trader with more capital? Having more capital in trading can provide certain advantages, such as increased opportunities for diversification. With more capital, traders can potentially take larger positions and potentially generate higher profits if successful trades are made. More capital can provide a buffer against market fluctuations and potential losses, allowing for a more resilient trading strategy. Other factors like market knowledge, trading strategy, risk management, and emotional discipline are equally important. Proper risk management is vital when trading with more capital to mitigate potential losses and protect the invested funds. Discipline and consistency are key elements of successful trading. Go to Maverick Currency's YouTube channel and go the About section and then click on the desired trader position to watch our intro video. Let's do a currency analysis and take a look at where is the relative strength and weakness. And as we always talk about, let's, let's start from the, from the top here. Let's take a look at all the currency baskets and kind of rate them and see where the, uh, the strength and weakness is. So let's uh, let's fill up our uh, velocity uh, sort of uh, chart here, so we can see where the strength and weakness is. So on a four-hour chart, you can see the uh, the Japanese yen continues to be on the upside and continues to stay uh, in this overbought territory. And I've said that before, where you know if you are seeing, let's say, let's go to the daily chart, when you see a candle go up and you're gonna hold the top of that candle, you know we are seeing more continuation coming off of that. And again, very similar candles we are seeing back to back one two and three we are back at this uh, uh, zone here but I mean, if you look at the longer term chart you can see that we're still kind of breaking new making new lows we haven't really even touched the prior support which is now the resistance it's coming right here but i think the bigger one is really at this point uh over this level but overall i mean this is still in a grand scheme of things this is still a bit of a a rally in the overall downward trend but for the shorter term, again, this is where it's not ready to turn over yet. 
this is still staying to the upside. I know it looks overbought here, but the momentum looks pretty strong. Now, let's take a look at the dollar. And I know dollar has been a bit of a frustrating currency to trade. I mean, you can see how we started off the day. Uh, let's go to a shorter term chart. And you can see that how uh, we almost recovered all the losses that we had on Friday. So things started to look a lot better this morning. Again, no news events, nothing on the horizon. And right about 9 o'clock, 8.45 or 9, the, the move started to go to the downside. It's pretty much a one-sided trade. We just got this little pull by, uh, sort of bear rally right here, and that's it. After that, it's been just one-sided trade. Again, this is where there's just period of uh, volatility that takes place, and then we have this period of sideways trading, which, again, I'm not so interested in holding these tons of periods because who knows which way it's going to go. We're looking for the initial move here. But right now, uh, looks pretty bearish. I mean, let's go on the daily chart. I mean, this, this, this uh, currency basket is a very messy looking basket. And I know this is where it hasn't been the easiest currency to trade because it just keep going back and forth. You know, a couple of days it looks good and then it goes weaker. And you just have to be sort of keeping making that shift uh, on a day to day and a week to week basis where you have to be flexible in trading it both ways. Where on the other hand, you have currencies like yen, which has been only trading on to the downside. So seeing a bit of a change in the shorter term. Uh, and again, I want to point out, look at the dollar today and look at the bond yields. Look at the, let's let's look at 10-year yields. And you can see exactly a price action that we saw in the dollar here. Uh, right around here, we did sort of turn around and then pretty much weeks throughout the day here. So it's very uh, random where there's certain days where we see sort of a correlation coming place and the days that correlation is totally absent. But that's just the market that we're trading with. So that we don't get to pick that. We just get to trade what's in front of us. Now, let's go over other currency baskets. So we look at the yen, still looking strong. Like, like I said, on a 15-minute chart, hourly chart, everywhere, it's just making a bit of a high base. So I think this is still, a re it still wants to go higher. This is not ready to turn over yet. Remember, for a turnover, we need to see a signs of failure. We need to see a reversal sign to really jump into that. Now, let's go to Swiss franc, because this is another one that it seems interesting here, because, you know, this is the question. Uh, daily chart, you can see that we are up against a key resistance, which we tested back in April. Then we tested back in May. And here we are testing it again uh, over here. And then here, here we are. So fourth time we're testing it. So is this the time to buy this breakout? If you look at the, the weekly chart, everything looks bullish. Look at a... Um, 12-hour chart, 4-hour chart, an hourly chart, every chart is sort of synced. So this is where I think it's worth taking a look at a, 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 a sort of a breakout off of this level. Uh, remember, if you're, un, if you're uh, unsure of this breakout, it's always uh, good to start uh, with uh, maybe, let's say, one-third of a half a position size and kind of build it up from there. But right now, I mean, this kind of looks like it's breaking out. So... I would I would say that the, the Swiss franc crosses is what something we need to kind of pay attention to in the next 24 to 48 hours uh, for a potential breakout. Here we are with the euro, and I know we, this is where we take a look at the comparison. I mean, euro is looking a little bit stronger, but it's not as strong compared to the Swiss franc chart. So this is where you need to come down to the euro Swiss franc chart to kind of look at that comparison. And you can see, you know, we are... You know, gradually moving lower in the euro Swiss franc trade, so which means that Swiss franc seems to is still a better play compared to the euro. So that's the one that we will be uh, paying close attention to. Let's go over, take a look at the pound, and same old story. And I want to take a look at 15 minute chart because you can see that this is the same story keep happening where you know you see a pullback and then we see a rally, we see a pullback and then we see a rally. So if you're trying to decide how or where should I get it. You want to get it on a pullbacks. That's just the, the way the trades has been has been kind of going. Those pullbacks have been a better trading opportunity than the than the breakouts. Because here we are. This is a good example. We did pull back almost at full retracement, but we just didn't go anywhere. So a lot of times you notice that it goes all the way back up, but then it just turns over, roll over again, and then it goes back up and then rolls over again. So I think it's a better trade to come in on those pullbacks rather than trying to buy the breakouts. Let's talk about CAD. I mean, CAD is seems like it's back in sync with the dollar. And I talked about that on a Friday's uh, in a Friday's uh, currency room, and you can see that this thing is rolling over, not not a, a bullish price action, especially uh, going into Wednesday as we uh, as we are seeing 
Bank of Canada on the horizon. We can see that how quickly it's just fallen out of the favor. It was the strongest currency literally for weeks. And then here we are, just kind of fallen back all the way down. So I think in the shorter term, uh, take a look at the dollar CAD. And I think they're very similar. You can see how dollar CAD is just going sideways here, which means that this thing is uh, almost uh, in sync with each other. So if you're looking at uh, weak dollar, then probably weaker on the CAD as well. Now let's go over the growth currencies because European currency is looking good over here. The growth currencies are not so much. I mean, look at Aussie. I know we got a nice little uh, reversal today, this morning. You can see how we kind of rolled over overnight. And then we rally a little bit here. But these rallies are not convincing. I think these rallies are still um, buying opportunities, in my opinion. So uh, Aussie, it's not the, the clearest um, currency to buy. I think you want to uh, stay away from you know looking at these uh, uh, longer-term movements here because this thing is very choppy. A lot of back and forth. So looking for shorter-term momentum, but not really uh, looking to stick out the neck for uh, what's supposed to come as far as the big outlook goes. And here we are with the Kiwi. Very similar thing. Uh, Kiwi is definitely looking better than the Aussie, but you can see that it's not really running. So if you say that, well, the risk sentiment is out there, why the growth currency are running? I don't think that market sentiment has anything to do right now with these uh, correlations and how the currency is doing. Maybe this is a lot to do with what the central banks are doing. Uh, it seems like that's how the markets have been trading for the last few months. There's a lot of a uh, lot of continuation, a lot of currencies that kind of go in favor and then kind of fall off of favor. And as a trader, we just want to see what's really important in today's markets. And compared to last year, things are a lot different this year. I mean, uh, the velocity or the volatility, which is lower, I know this is definitely better for traders because, you know, this is where you don't run into those areas where you have those quick runs and quick fall offs. I mean, you can look at the ATR kind of gauge that where where the volatility was last year and where we are from in the back down here you can see the volatility is not so much that uh, it's not, not not that not that much i mean look at the dollar last year back in september october volatility was triple of what we are seeing right now so it's definitely quite a condition which also means that you can hold a position longer but you're not getting that shorter term burst one way or the other which means that you have to kind of look at higher time frames and trade based off that because you can get a lot of chop on a 15 minute chart. I mean, here's a 15 minute chart on the dollar here. There's a lot of chop. But then as you go higher term, then you can see, well, you know, you can see things more clearly as you do in a shorter term. So uh, let's go over uh, some of the some of the currency. Uh, let's, let, let's go over, take a look at the, uh, the velocity scores overall. And this is where we are. So we are have minus two for CAD and dollar. Aussie is a minus one. Kiwi is a, uh, is a zero. And here we are, Swiss franc, kind of leading the chart here. And then at the end being plus three. So let's take a look at some charts, especially Swiss franc against the CAD, against the dollar, and perhaps against the Aussie and Kiwi as well. Because that's really where I think we're likely to see some setups here. So let's just start with dollar Swiss franc. Oops. Let's go our dollar... Swiss franc. So you can see the dollar Swiss franc looks very interesting to me. I mean, take a look at the daily chart. This thing has been stuck between, let's say, 88, 30, up to 91. So about a 300 pip range. I mean, at this point, it's getting closer to the support. And whenever you get these candlesticks that are just sitting at the lows of the day, I mean, there's a better chance that it might just continue in the following day. But again, just realize that we have a very strong support at about 88.40. We're sitting at a, we're sitting at about 88.52. So not too much difference there. I need a confirmation to break below that in order to get a confirmation. But I think at this point, I would I would wait. I will be looking for this break of this area to really confirm that. Again, I think that will be the first setup I'll be looking at, especially if you're looking at dollar on the short side. Dollar Swiss franc goes on the top of the list there. Let's take a look at the cat Swiss franc. I mean, cat Swiss franc seems like there's a little bit more room for this to fall. I mean, it's right below the 20, the 50 day moving average. It's not right at the support level. The support goes all the way down here at 64.84. So I think there's a little bit more room for this to fall. 
So I think Cats is Frank kind of goes on the top of the list on, on my here, followed by the uh, dollar uh, Swiss Frank. But again, you're trying to decide which one to go with. Take a look at dollar cat. That would let you decide which one is actually showing strength versus which one is showing more weakness. Now, let's take a look at other uh, other uh, currency pairs like Aussie Swiss Frank. You can see that Aussie Swiss Frank is right at that support here. So this thing, again, very similar to the Aussie dollar, the uh, sorry, the uh, the dollar Swiss Frank. This is right at this uh, Aussie uh, at the bottom here. So again, I need a confirmation if this needs to break. We got double, triple times that we have bounced it off this level. I need that confirmation here. So as much as a chart that looks good, you know, you want to make sure that you are using proper um, sort of uh, confirmations to get in. And here we are with the Kiwi Swiss Frank. Overall, this thing looks pretty weak as well. So these are the these are the setups that are still on the watch list here. I think as we go through all of them, probably catch this Frank looks the best here on a further break to the downside. But I would, uh, I mean, look at the uh, 12 hour chart here with the with the break here, just a little low base here and then pulling back here. So everything is sitting at the lower of the candle here, which means that, you know, in the next 24 hours, we could see continuation. Uh, especially in the European session, that's where we see the Swiss rank really kind of come into uh, action there. So those are the setups that I'm personally looking at. Let's take a look at some of the yen crosses as well, because I know those are the ones that everyone's watching, uh, you know, especially as it's pulling back. I mean, this is one, two, three, fourth day of straight decline. I mean, if you go on a longer term chart, you'll see that, well, this is up against a very key resistance and just pulling back. I think it has a little, little bit more further downside of this. The question is that where do you get in? You get in on bases on bear rallies. This was a good little base to kind of jump in here. But I think I think uh, based on the price action here, this probably has further room to, uh, for, for drop here. Same thing goes with, uh, uh, let's say, dollar yen. You can see we broke below the 50 to moving average. So now dollar yen has gone below the 20, below the 50. I mean, let's go on the daily chart. We're getting close towards that 140 level that we talked about how this is an important level of resistance. Um, so this is where we need to find that if, if this support comes in for our chart, you can see that it's slowly rolling over. So I think that trade still continues on um, and we'll see where it finds some sort of reversal. Maybe not till Wednesday when we get the US CPI, but for now, it seems like that is the trade that likely to continue. So those are the ones that I'm really uh, paying close attention to. Uh, again, like I said, this is a, a market environment where we see a uh, pickup in activity and we see a little bit of sideways price action. But at the same time, make sure that you're trading with the overall direction. Um, you know, consolidation are, are happening, but then we just have to be a little bit more patient or timeline wise for our trades to work. And if you're looking for a shorter term trades, then be active around these events because that's where we can see a, a burst of energy, regardless of wherever is the movement, we get that more of the push. Uh, but outside of that, uh, you know, keep the powder dry and wait, keep uh, keep the powder dry for those uh, news events that you want to trade. So that's the game plan. We'll see you guys in the next update. Till then, take care.